I'm Justin Ornuff of Baseball Rebellion, and I'd like to ask you a question. Do you think pitchers should actively push off the rubber towards home plate to deliver a baseball? My answer is a definitive no. And there's a variety of reasons which I'm about to explain to you, but especially if you're thinking about a coaching cue, which is universal in the baseball world of push off the rubber, you begin to open up a Pandora's box of potential problems that could, have, could exist or could arise. And to start this conversation, and my, really my goal here is to provide some clarification of why pushing is bad, what it can lead to, and what really the only thing that should push, should shift, is. So to start off the conversation, when I step up to the rubber, the first thing that I must do is hook the rubber. This is like a standard. It has to happen. I learned this from Rick Honeycutt. He was with the Dodgers. He may have learned it through the Dodgers lineages of Sandy Koufax doing this. But when you hook the rubber, you're taking the back part of your foot, you're taking your cleat, and wedging it into the pitching rubber to create this angle. And this angle that you create automatically creates this double inside load effect. If you've read about it through Chaz, he talks about it in his article. This presets my hip to move forward as soon as I lift my lead leg. And this is the move that I must have to make sure that I'm not flat footed and my hips work efficiently into my delivery. So to kind of go through a demonstration here, if I get my foot wedged into this rubber here, I like to say hooking it, then as I come to my stretch position, and as soon as I lift my lead leg here, watch what happens to my hips. I immediately go forward with my hips. So I didn't actively think about pushing, I just went ahead and preset my angle, and as soon as this lead leg lifts, it allows my hips to shift forward. Now this could easily get confused with me actively thinking about manipulating these hips. So some would say, well you're really pushing your hips out. I could think about pushing my hips out, but I don't like to use the word push. I like to say shift, drive, get your lower half out in front. These are more terms that help with teaching, especially a young student. Because as soon as you say the word push to a young player, this is what it looks like. He actively flexes the back leg, squats down, and jumps towards his target. That's not what we want, because that in itself is what starts to create major, major problems. So for me, especially when I start teaching my students the usage of the hips, I like to like have them feel as if they were falling. Especially when they start on flat ground and we haven't got up to the mound yet, I want them to really start feeling comfortable, feeling uncomfortable, with their hips moving so far out in front of their body, they really feel like they're falling. And the same thing could be said when I get up here, and if I have my preset angle here, and I really allow my hips to get out in front of my body, it feels like I'm falling. But I didn't actively push there. And again, the only thing I would ever be okay with that would seem if it was pushing forward is just your hips. I like to say shift. So really my terminology would be is I want you to shift the hips and go for a ride on your back leg. I want this knee to stay inside your back foot and stay sustainable the whole time you move down the mound. Because we have to remember we have an advantage as pitchers. We have a downward slope. And we gotta make sure 
but our lower half is always moving down the slope. And more than likely, because I've seen it at every level, as soon as you say push, your lower half is going to start doing this, and your direction is not going to be downward, it's going to be straight forward or upward, which starts creating this distance between your front foot and the mound. And why is this bad? It's because as you go to land, your body is ready to throw the baseball, but your front foot hasn't hit it, hasn't hit yet. This is the moment of impact, and this is where all the energy should be transferred. And so since I'm ready to roll, and then my front foot hits, oftentimes my arm starts to get into an unsupported position. And this lead, can lead to some health concerns, but really, in terms of just pitching, it starts to lead, like, lead to a lot of rhythm and timing issues. Because our mind, because we're geared to pushing, what do I have to do to throw the baseball? I have to exert my rotational force here. And we know if you listen to my articles, it's not this force, it's this force. This is what I should be concentrated on, not the active drive off my back leg. So I hope this provides some clarification because in terms of coaching, the word push directly signals, and I'll say to a young player, because those are the most valuable in terms of us teaching, and they're the next wave, they're the next wave of players coming through and eventually getting to the big leagues. But you gotta make sure that they're not associating this with this type of movement, actively jumping towards home plate. Because I can't jump the ball to home plate. Doesn't make much sense. So this is Justin Ornuff for Baseball Rebellion. I hope this helps you. Thanks for listening.